Hello everyone and welcome back to the Denver Broncos franchise. Yesterday we did the offseason and now it's time to do the preseason, which is always fun. So I already did the majority of training camp. Uh, I used most of our new players in a lot of these drills. Let me show you who is on the roster. In the offseason, you probably saw that I signed Gardner Minshew to be like our temporary starter if we can't find anyone. I also signed Andy Dalton, who was just available in free agency. The thing I like about Andy Dalton is he has the mentor tag. So like, let's say, for example, we want to build Joe Shields up to actually be a decent player. Andy Dalton having the mentor tag helps Joe a lot in that regard. Granted, I don't think necessarily that Joe is the guy, but also I'll let it kind of be a QB battle. Gardner Minshew and Andy Dalton can battle here in the preseason to see who gets the starting job come week one. Running backs all the same. I did sign undrafted free agent out of Washington, Cole Avant. He is a power style back, so more of like a true replacement to Javante Williams, whereas Tyler Beatty and Julio McLaughlin are both kind of speed threat type of guys, elusive backs. So it's nice to have a guy like Cole Avant potentially, although obviously there's no guarantee he makes the team. In the wide receiver department, we've got Jerry Judy, of course, who did gain X Factor. I don't know if I mentioned that. He is now Superstar X Factor, and currently his X Factor ability is Yak Em Up. We've got Marvin Mims still, who still has a star development. Josh Reynolds is probably not going to play a ton, but he's a decent backup. The guy I'm really excited about is Chester Truman. I want to say we drafted him in the fifth or sixth round, and he has hidden dev, so just an absolute steal. And then he has 99 speed and 99 acceleration. The guy is just a speed demon. His other skills need need work. He doesn't have the best hands. He's not a great route runner, specifically on medium routes. He is going to have a decent chance to fumble because of the 66 carrying, but he also has 97 change of direction, 80 juke move. If he can get the ball in open space, it's over for the defense, basically. We also have three undrafted guys. One of these three will make the team. The other two will probably be cut. Jamie Crothers was a guy I actually had on my board who ended up going undrafted, and he's not anything particularly special. He is six foot three, so he's decently sized with 89 speed, which isn't bad and decent catching, although not a great route runner. He is the worst in terms of overall of the wide receivers. There's also Britton Venable, who I believe is like the next fastest receiver behind Chester Truman in the whole draft class, has 94 speed, 95 excel. Again, a pretty terrible route runner other than deep route running and with not great hands, but he will get an opportunity to make the team as well. And then the other guy is Tyrell Simmons, who is sort of a mix of the two players, but a bit slower with better acceleration. He has decent short route running, pretty good acceleration. His hands aren't great. His change of direction is okay. Like he's decent. I think he has the best chance to make the team of those three, but we shall see. All I know is that I I'm rocking with these four. These are my top four receivers for sure. At the tight end position, we didn't see it in the last video either, but Greg Dulcich has superstar development now, which makes my first round draft draft pick of Rashad Winters look even a bit more ridiculous because Greg Dulcich is a superstar. He's only 24. He is going to slowly but surely turn into an absolute animal. The thing about Rashad Winters is I think he has higher upside. He does have hidden dev. So, I mean, who knows if that's superstar, then we've just got a tie. He's much faster, a worse blocker, but he's much more of like a receiving type of tight end. But there is a chance that we have two superstar tight ends. And if that's the case, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Do I trade Dulcich? Do we just run with two superstar tight ends and just run a lot of double tight end sets? I'm not sure. We also brought in Harrison Bryant. He is probably going to make the team as the third guy. And then I brought in Ben Whitmore as well. He's a UDFA and he doesn't seem like anything special at all. In fact, he seems pretty bad, but I like the undrafted free agent storylines. So he will get an opportunity to play at least in the preseason. He can battle Harrison Bryant for that tight end three spot, but I imagine it will not be close. Left tackle. I did re-sign Cameron Fleming. He is now going to be the starting left tackle, whereas he was good depth last season. We, of course, traded away Garrett Bowles to free up some cap space. So Cameron Fleming will start there. We do have Jackson Carmen, who I signed in free agency to be good depth. He's only 24, so he has potential to move up. And a good thing about Cameron Fleming, he has the mentor tag. So Jackson Carmen is going to gain more XP due to that. And then we have undrafted free agent out of Alabama, Demario Belser, and he has an opportunity to make the team as well. Our 
left guard is still Ben Powers with William Sherman as his backup. Our center, our starting center is rookie Blaine Wynn, who we took in the second or third round and he has hidden development. So he's going to be a really quality player. I'm excited about him. He has good strength and it really just needs to work on run blocking more than anything else. He's a decent pass blocker. So back up there is Alex Forsyth. Right guard is Quinn Miners with Wyatt Davis backing him up. And then I also brought in UDFA Pat Foot out of Clemson. He was a guy I actually had on my big board that I guess fell out of the draft, didn't get drafted. Very similar boat to the left tackle. Terrible, terrible run blocker, but a pretty good pass blocker. So if we can get him, you know, up to a decent run blocking rating, he could become like a backup or possibly a starter someday. Who knows? Although it's hard to get offensive linemen development trait upgrades if they weren't drafted with them. Like, I don't even know if it's possible actually. So he is probably going to be stuck with normal dev forever, but he could become like a quality backup. Right tackle still is Mike McGlinchey. We could actually look to trade him now as his savings aren't in the negative. So if we wanted to clear up even more cap room, we could try to trade away Mike McGlinchey. He was second in the NFL in sacks allowed last season. So he gets paid a lot of money. He's really good overall, but he allowed a ton of sacks. Um, he's he is more of a run blocker. Now that I'm looking at his, his stats, his only 75, 77, and 73 for pass blocking, but he's an exceptional run blocker. And then Robbie Cameron is, I think, a UDFA. I don't recall drafting this guy. It looks like he's a UDFA out of US. F and he's quality, man. I mean, 65 overall for a rookie is not bad at all. And then we've got Kevin Robertson also just kind of trying to get a, a roster spot. He's got pretty good speed, similar to Mike McGlinchey and is not a great pass blocker and is a pretty bad run blocker. So I'm a bit more interested in Robbie Cameron but Kevin Robertson, we can see if he makes the team. I have moved Baron Browning, who also gained Superstar X Factor, to left end. He's going to strictly be a pass rusher now. Even though his ratings for pass coverage aren't bad, he really is at his best, I think, when he's rushing the passer. His 80 power moves with 73 block shedding and 71 finesse moves. Like he can do a little bit of each. His 93 acceleration, 87 speed. And now that he has Superstar and Superstar X Factor, He's just going to get really good, really fast. I want him to have the X Factor ability Fearmonger. His superstar ability got changed probably because he got moved to end. I'm guessing that that's why his abilities got changed, but he has Fearmonger now and Unfakeable as his superstar ability. He's not even to 80 overall yet. So when he gets there, he'll start unlocking more and more of these abilities. Behind him is Matt Henningsen, who was on the team all last season and we just never saw him at all. There's also rookie Earl Wright, who was an actual draft pick. And he's a 66 overall, could definitely beat out Henningsen for that backup left end spot, 100%. And then I did bring in a UDFA out of Auburn, Jeremy McAllister. I don't expect him to make the team, but he does have 70 power moves and 66 block shedding. Granted, that's worse than literally everyone else on the team, but it's not terrible. At right end, the starting right end is going to be Nick Benito, who I think if we could get him star development this year, that would be pretty huge. I think we would have our kind of edge rushers of the future. He does have 76 finesse moves, but only 63 block shedding. Also very fast to be on the end. So I'm excited about him. I was really excited for him to play at like the end of last season when Frank Clark went down, but then he broke his thumb and missed the rest of the season as well. There there's Elijah Garcia, who was also on the team all of last season that we just never saw. There's Chester Hightower, who I took very late in the draft, and he is only a 61 overall, just going to be battling for a roster spot at all. He is really not super impressive. And then there's another UDFA out of UCF, Jason Fusco, and he has 73 power moves, only 55 block shedding, but the 73 power moves as a UDFA was intriguing enough for me to sign him. D-tackle, starting D-tackle is going to be Zach. Allen and then Enyoma Uwazarike, I think is how you say his first name. I know how to say his last name, Uwazarike, will be the other D tackle. We're pretty bad at D tackle. I do think that we need an upgrade going into the next season, but Zach Allen is a quality player. He is 27 now, though, and he's on the final year of his contract. He's either on the final year or the second to last year. He might be a really good guy to trade away, potentially. Not going to do anything just yet. Jermaine Stewart is a rookie and he's a 65 overall. He's 
solid all the way around 66 power move 65 finesse and 69 block shedding i think he definitely has a good shot to make the team and then deontay burnett has 74 power moves and 67 block shedding so also a decent shot to make the team i think i'm totally fine moving with four d tackles this season uh, i i wouldn't have that big of an issue but we'll kind of see how everyone performs here in the preseason starting left outside linebacker is drew sanders his backup is jonathan cooper jonathan cooper will be pretty much solely a pass rusher this season and i actually now that i'm thinking about it i wonder if it would be worthwhile to move him as like a d tackle or or move one of our maybe like nick benito to like d tackle or something and move him to end just now that i'm thinking about it jake edwards was a like round one to two projected guy that fell like all the way to the fifth that we just kind of took a shot on and he I mean, he's not great by any means, but he does have okay coverage ratings. So I do think he could back up Drew Sanders. It's not ideal. He's a little slower. And then the other guy is a UDFA out of Georgetown, JT Floyd. He is a little bit faster than Edwards, has worse tackling. It's kind of just worse in every way than Edwards and also doesn't have great coverage stats. Starting middle linebacker is Devin Bush. And I'm really glad that we were able to re sign him. Uh, Chad Muma is on the team. We traded for him in the offseason when we were like making up all that cap space and just a really good depth guy to have. I, uh, just a solid player the whole way around. Has good speed, good tackling, good play recognition. Not the best in coverage, 65 and 63 respectively. So, you know, much prefer Baron Browning in that spot, but I think Chad Muma is excellent depth and will definitely see the field a decent amount. Starting right outside linebacker, we're pretty weak here. The starter is set to be Avery Baptiste. The reason I have him set to start is because of that hidden development trait. He's only a 65, but he could improve really, really quickly. I don't expect it to be superstar with how like sort of bad he is right now, but it's definitely star at the very least, which I can work with. And he's just kind of all around mid at the moment. He's fast with decent zone coverage and decent man coverage as an outside linebacker. And like, you know, this, this Broncos team undeniably got worse in the second season. So I think it's important to give these young guys a bunch of playing time to see what their development traits are and how good they can get and how quickly. So that is why I am starting Avery Baptiste. I also forgot to mention Tim Ragland and JJ Russell. JJ Russell was involved in one of the trades we made in the offseason. Then Tim Ragland was one of our late round picks. They're not going to see the field a ton. JJ Russell likely to not make the team, I would guess. Tim Ragland will probably be sticking around. Then we've got Avery Baptiste, who I mentioned is the starter. Terrence Hales is the backup there. And then Doug Johnson as well, both rookies. So we've, we've got a ton of young guys on this team. Pat Sertan, of course, the heart and soul of really the whole team, but especially the defense, 97 overall, only 24 years old. And I mean, he is just, he's disgusting and he's only going to continue getting better for a while. He's going to be a 99 probably by next season. A guy I'm really excited about that we traded for was Tyreek Stevenson. He was involved in our, I believe our Justin Simmons trade. He's young with, I think, star development. Yep. Star development, 91 speed. His coverages aren't great, but they can get there. He's super fast. He's just a great athlete, really a fantastic athlete uh, that I think we could turn into a really good CB2. So I'm really excited that we were able to get him in that trade, which is super fun. He's got excellent acceleration and pretty good top end speed. Damari Mathis is going to be the CB3, which he played really well last season. So I'm excited about that. Riley Moss moves up to CB number four. He might see the field a little bit more. He did improve a decent amount between season one and two. His man coverage is still just terrible, which is really unfortunate because we're a team that runs man more often than not. I brought in Kelvin Joseph off of free agency and he's just really fast. Again, not great in coverage, but it's good to have speed on defense. He's, you know, fifth string anyway. So Fionn Hicks, Derek Covington, and Peter Palmer will all be fighting for a roster spot, but there's a good chance all three of these guys are gone. At free safety, our starter is Cameron Bynum, another guy that we traded for after trading away Justin Simmons. And he isn't anything super, super special. He's just a quality player. He's 26, 75 overall. Decent speed, not great in zone coverage, which is a little unfortunate. Pretty good in man coverage, but yeah, I mean, he's just a good player. He's, uh, you know, a spot starter for now. Uh, we will probably look to improve his position at some point. His backup is Delaren Turner Yell, who had an excellent last game of season one. And then Isaiah Ford, uh, UDFA out of Ohio State, actually looks to be not half bad. Strong safety is Caden Stearns once again. I believe he is still normal dev. He is indeed. If we could get him to star dev, I'd be a lot more excited excited about him, but safety at the moment is definitely a need, uh, but he is a pretty 
good strong safety. I mean, 91 speed with 75 zone coverage and 92 acceleration with good play recognition and good awareness. Like he is just a quality starter. Our kicker is Tanner Brown and our punter is Riley Dixon. So now that I've gone through the roster, and who's what, who's when, who's where, who's why. Let's go to the depth chart. And there's a few players that I am immediately, I'm just shutting them down for the preseason because I do not want to risk injury. The first one is Javante Williams. He will not be playing during the preseason. He's a bit injury prone as it is. I am not looking for him to get hurt before we even get into the regular season, especially because Gardner Minshew is set to be our starting quarterback. And I think we're going to have to run the ball a lot. So we need Javante Williams as fresh as can be. Jerry Jude is getting shut down. So Marvin Mims, Chester Truman, Josh Reynolds, I mean, everyone is moving above Jerry Judy. He's not going to play. I don't want him to get injured either. He's really our only true wide receiver target that is great to elite at the moment. The tight end position, nobody's getting shut down here, but Rashad Winters is going to be considered my tight end one with Dulcich as his backup. And then Harrison Bryant, really most of the defense can play. I think you guys know who I'm going to shut down. It's Pat Sertan. We're not risking Patrick Sertan the second getting injured. Before the regular season starts. I mean, that would just be absolutely devastating. So let's give, you know, Fayon Hicks or Derek Covington the last roster spot and Pat Sertan will be benched for the preseason. And then other than that, I think everyone is good. So let's get into the first preseason game against the Detroit Lions who are visiting in Denver this season. And power field at mile high as always. If you're watching this, you know, when I inevitably post it on YouTube, which I, I am streaming it for those of you watching on YouTube. If you ever want to come hang out, this video is going to work a little bit differently than normal videos. I think that goes without saying the games will go really fast because we do have to get through three preseason games. So I would play the moments, but I feel like that won't give me good enough, a, a good enough indication of how everyone played. So we are going to play the full games, which is going to take a while. They definitely take a while to record. Chester Truman will be our return man. I'm really excited about him. I mean, how can you not be excited about 99.99 acceleration and speed as Gardner Minshew takes the field for the first time in a Broncos uniform here in the preseason. 68 overall is fantastic. He's so good. Oh, good. Javante Williams in the game, even though I tried to shut him down, probably because he's still listed as the power back, which is my fault. Uh, I will go fix that really quick, but he will play for this one snap, I guess. All right, I mean, if he tears like his ACL on this one snap, that would be absolutely devastating because <laughs> it's the only snap he's going to get all preseason. So can Gardner Minshew do it through the air? Of course, we've got Marvin Mims, Josh Reynolds, Chester Truman in the game. I'm just going to go to Rashad Winters very quickly, and he dropped it. Incomplete, fourth and inches. Well, that's a concern from Winters if he is going to be a drop artist. I hope that's not the case. I tried to throw to Chester Truman, and it was a terrible idea. It was way too late. <laughs> it's picked off by Jack Campbell, and the Lions will take over. So on second and eight, they do still have Sam Laporta. I see him. Are they going to throw to him? No. That's caught by Mike Williams. That's right. Well, we gave him the ball with excellent field position. So what did I really expect, right? Like, Oh, it's going to be a pass from Goff and Damari Mathis. Can't get a hand on it. Touchdown, Sam Laporta. He is a really quality tight end. I'm, I don't think he's going to live up to that in Madden, but a good tight end nonetheless. And the Lions have put six on the board already after the Gardner Minshew pick because the draft class this year was absolutely terrible for quarterbacks. Even the quarterback I liked, Sheldon Richardson, was only a 60 something overall as we'll see chester truman in his electric speed for the first time as a reception first and 10 to the 45 as i will look to throw for rashad winters makes the grab brought down by cj gardner johnson rashad winters already very involved and of course it's the preseason so i am absolutely going for it it's not a chance i'm not going for this go for reynolds in the back of the end zone incomplete was he out of bounds? Did he step out of bounds? I feel like that was a good ball from Gardner Minshew. Yeah, I mean, that is an excellent throw from Gardner Minshew. He should absolutely be getting his feet in. Wait, did he? Can I challenge this? That left foot is in bounds. And he started on his right when he got possession. Not booth reviewed. I, whatever, man. Challenge it. I don't care. Wait, it actually got overturned. Those never work. Oh my God, I'm so glad I challenged that. Josh Reynolds... With the touchdown reception, 
Tanner Brown on to kick the PAT. It's 7 to 7. First and 10 from the 29 for Denver after forcing the Lions punt. Tyler Beatty on the carry has 8. Oh, I like this play. I like this play a lot. Do you think Truman can just absolutely scorch his man downfield? Of course he can. Chester Truman. He's so fast. Oh my god, I love him so much. Chester Truman is going to be an elite deep threat in the NFL. A bomb from Gardner Minshew as he just outruns everyone. I mean, this is what you get with 99 speed. He's like Tyreek Hill. Well, Goff and company back on the field after having to punt it away last time. Let's see what Uwazarike is all about. He's all about getting a tackle for loss on Jameer Gibbs here. Loss of two for the second year running back. Two minutes left, and then it's time for the backups here in the first preseason game, as I think that the starters only play one quarter in Madden Logic, as Mike Williams just absolutely mossed the hell out of Damari Mathis, outruns Bynum, touchdown Lions. <laughs> Dude, Damari Mathis got owned on that play. Holy cow. That does mean we get one more possession, or at least part of a possession with the starting offense. As Gardner Minshew on play action will look to throw downfield for who else? Chester Truman having a huge day already. 10 for 13, 161 for Gardner Minshew, by the way. I kind of just want to send Truman deep all of the time. So let's do it. Send Chester. Go over the top for Marvin Mims. Oh, this offense is going to be so nice, man. Marvin Mims, not a bad deep threat himself with pretty good speed down the field. Chester Truman baited C.J. Gardner-Johnson down the field and a great throw from Gardner Minshew over Jack Campbell's head and the rest was Marvin Mims. As Sam Laporta is still in, I'm not sure who 23 is. I'll have to learn some numbers. Oh my God, Laporta just cooked our entire defense. I don't have to learn anything actually because Laporta is just going to score. Yeah, touchdown Earl Wright who just came into the game immediately down with an injury. So it's the Red Rifle. We have Britton Venable, Tyrell Simmons, Harrison Bryant, and Jamie Carruthers in the game. Jaleel McLaughlin is also here, and I'm going to give him a carry. He's just a little guy with some good speed, and he's going to have a good carry to the outside here. Can't juke out one defender, but has a pickup of 12. Obviously, with a grain of salt, this is against backup defenses. Robbie Cameron, our rookie right tackle, is already injured. Brings in Kevin Robertson. That's right, the other rookie. Well, Kevin, you better get acclimated quickly because we're running it to your side, buddy, with Jaleel. He did hit a really good block, actually. Jaleel McLaughlin, he has good speed. Did you got one defender? He does. He gets some extra yards. Jaleel McLaughlin up to the 28. First and 10 from the 28 after that play. We have Britton Venable playing where Chester Truman will normally play. And he's got excellent speed as well. And he falls into the end zone. Touchdown, Broncos. Britton Venable looking to take that last wide receiver roster spot. And immediately, I am impressed. He is tiny as well, which is maybe not something we need. But if he earns the roster spot, he earns the roster spot, man. What can I say? First and 10 from the 25 for the Lions. Hendon Hooker. I think he looks good in a Lions jersey, actually. Kind of suits him. Oh, my God. Was that Terrence Hales? That was Terrence Hales. Third string linebacker just killed David Montgomery. Might change up some numbers. I won't change numbers of any starters, but I don't know. Marvin Mims wore 83 in the preseason and now is wearing 19 in real life. So I don't think it's that strange by any means. Oh, Fusco. But then Jake Edwards forces a fumble and recovers it himself. He was like a bust in the draft. Around one to two projection that fell to like the fifth. Makes a huge play here on Hendon Hooker in the preseason that might be returned like that may not actually be a fumble but either way an excellent play from jake edwards Britton venable it has a deep shot here i am curious to see how he does i'm i'm going for him it's overthrown by dalton can he catch up to it anyway with the speed he can't oh if that is accurate from dalton that is another touchdown for venable Jake Edwards is a guy I had like really high on my draft board and he just ended up being kind of a bust but Maybe he plays better than his overall. Who knows? Deontay Burnett in the backfield again. Hendon Hooker breaks away. Chester Hightower, another rookie, makes the tackle. Great pressure. Back-to-back -back plays. Deontay Burnett 
Hightower cleans it up. So I've brought Cole Avant into the game. He's wearing number three, formerly Russell Wilson's number. And he is more of like a true power back type, but shows no power here. Uh, Jermaine Stewart, I believe, is the guy I'm using right now. That's going to be a pick for Peter Palmer, the UDFA. A terrible throw from Hendon Hooker. So not much of a play from Peter Palmer, but he capitalized, and you got to give him some credit for that. Peter Palmer, our lowest rated corner, UDFA, makes a play, gets a pick. So I got to say, this second string offense hasn't looked great. As that's a catch for Harrison Bryant. Can he outrun everyone? No. Down at the eight. A good throw from Andy Dalton, though. At this point, still heavily leaning in the direction of Gardner Minshew. We'll, of course, see some of the other guys. As that's Tyrell Simmons in the end zone. Touchdown, Denver. A good throw from Dalton again. Good route from Simmons. Was just wide open. And a touchdown for him. I think it's a first catch of the day for him as well. As, yeah, Dalton just on the run, had a wide open target and hit it. Just that simple. First and 10 from the 40. Hooker to throw. Finds his man quickly, and that is Peter Palmer in coverage that time. And boy, did he look really slow, or is that just me? As Chad Muma is injured. All right, we've got 37 seconds and two timeouts. What can we do? Haven't seen any of Jamie Crothers yet. Oh my god, Andy Dalton. Holy cow, that was bad. I think he may have just sealed his backup role <laughs> with that throw. Oh my goodness. Brandon Joseph gets the pick, and I mean, that doesn't even look like it was going for who it was intended to go for. I was trying to throw to Tyrell Simmons down the field, which was probably a bad decision because the safety was there anyway, but holy cow. Andy Dalton missed the throw so bad. Well, that gives the Lions some time to attempt to tie or well not tie we're up by 10 it's literally impossible they cannot tie where is israel mukwamu going where is he going i mean it's a it's a touchdown for the lions where is he going? i have to look at this replay what is he doing what this continues to happen this year where like he's in just perfect position to tackle and so i switch on and i hit x to do a safe tackle what is he doing? Oh my god. Likely the last play of the first half. And we'll just, you know, we'll do what we can do. We'll look for Britton Venable. And he continues to impress. I think that's his third catch. There we go. Ragland is in the game. Time to see what he has. He's wearing number 20. That is so weird as a middle linebacker. Jermaine Stewart in the backfield, but Hendon Hooker is way too fast. Oh, our D-line is so slow with the starters out. He gets killed by Derek Covington. So it's first and goal from the one. J.J. Russell's in the game. That's exciting. The guy we traded for in our offseason trades. A great play there. Jermaine Stewart and Terrence Hales on the tackle. Jake Edwards is in the game. Jermaine Stewart again makes a play. Jermaine Stewart showing up. Third and goal from the 10. Hooker will look to throw. Scrambling. Get him, Isaiah Ford. Let's go. A great tackle from backup safety. Isaiah Ford keeps him out of the end zone. Fourth and goal, Lions. They are going for this. Okay, I respect it. Terrence Hales is lined up on the Porta. Let's see what he can do. He can It doesn't matter because it, it went to Khalif Raymond. I don't know who was guarding him. It was probably Peter Palmer. It's Derek Covington. Where is he going? This is Joe Shields, by the way. He is currently listed as the third string quarterback. As That is an excellent catch from Jamie Carruthers, by the way. I'm going for it. What do we have to lose? It's, uh, it's the preseason, right? Might as well have some fun. Joe Shields back to throw. Looking for Carruthers, who drops it. Not even knocked out, just a straight up drop. And the Detroit Lions take over. It was an accurate throw and a well-timed throw from Shields as well. So that's just, it's on Crothers. It's a bad drop, bad time to make a drop when you're trying to make the roster. It's Deontay Burnett is in the backfield and gets a sack on Hendon Hooker. Deontay Burnett and Jermaine Stewart have really been impressing me in the middle of the defense. I haven't really seen any of Fusco. Wow, what a play. Who is that? Is that Tim Ragland? Wearing number 20? 
A great play from Ragland. Joe Shields actually looked fairly decent on the last drive. Just a couple of unfortunate drops from his receivers. This is for Tyrell Simmons. Another excellent throw from Joe Shields. That's a big first and 10 to the 48. That was a good carry from Cole Avant, by the way. Got to pay attention to that. Joe Shields, though, on play action. Going to look to throw, and that's, you know, that's where he's not going to be great. Poor accuracy. Occasionally, he's going to have those. Wouldn't be shocked if we fail, honestly. <laughs> but fourth and inches from the 18 we will go to Cole Avant. Can he get the first? No, he's well short. First and 10 Lions. That sucks. First and 10 from the 19 for Hendon Hooker and the Lions offense. And this is going to be a sack for Tim Ragland on the blitz. Tim Ragland continues to impress. So this is Walt Morse. He is a UDFA we signed. And he could steal the third QB spot from Joe Shields, depending on how he does. He has, I think, the weakest arm on the whole roster. Oh, that's knocked out of Tyrell Simmons' hands. But he's pretty accurate short, specifically. And he has the ideal sense of pressure trait, which is... Ideal, obviously. We're going to throw that over the middle. A decent throw, considering he was under pressure, for Tyrell Simmons, who has been very involved. Third and one for the Lions. Terrence Hales, haven't heard his name super recently, but he was popping off early on. He's in the backfield. Hendon Hooker gets around him, but Henningsen is there. The initial pressure from Terrence Hales, and then Henningsen brings down Hendon Hooker. It's fourth and six. Jamie Crothers across the middle makes the grab, makes somebody miss. A good grab from Crothers, who has been quiet. It's third and seven from the 49. We will be looking to throw. Crothers is just open. Make the grab, buddy. He goes down with it. Good stuff by Jamie Crothers. Third and 10 from the 30. Jamie Crothers makes the grab and is inside the 10. Really coming to life here late in the game. And he's been doing a great job. Walt Morse has been quite good. I mean, I've been making terrible throws, but Morse has been accurate when... All right. <laughs> I had to say something. Second and goal from the seven. I'm looking for Britton Venable here, probably. Actually, I'm going to go to Harrison Bryant, and that should be a touchdown. Touchdown Broncos. Harrison Bryant has been just fine as the third string tight end so far. And Walt Morse, other than that one bad throw on the last play, has actually looked pretty good to this point. And a touchdown on the docket for him. All right, Walt, what have you got for us? You have a game-tying drive in your back pocket. Venable on the reception. we got to go hurry up. Let's go a screen for Avant. Snap the ball. Oh, my God. Avant makes the grab. Can he get out of bounds? I think... No, he did not get out of bounds. That's not good. First and 10 from the 38. Going to be looking to throw here for Bryant. Makes the grab. Hurry it up. Hurry it up. Spike it. If Walt Morse actually makes this happen, I will be considering him the QB3 instead of Joe Shields. This is a throw for Simmons, and it's knocked out. Absolutely killed. Third and 10. Only 15 seconds left as well. We have time for a play and then a spike and then another play, if even that. Throw for Bryant, and it's deflected. And the Lions will win the game. That needed to have some touch on it, which is my bad. Take a look at player stats. Hendon Hooker had a 137 rating. Four touchdowns, one pick. Jesus. Gardner was really good. 11 for 14, two touchdowns, one pick. Walt Morse, 9 for 20, which a lot of the incompletions are my fault, so don't read too much into that. He didn't have anything that was, like, horrendously inaccurate, which is really, for the most part, what I'm looking at. Whereas Andy Dalton did have, like, two or three that were really, really inaccurate, including one that was red inaccurate and was picked. And then Joe Shields just didn't get a ton of opportunity, did he? He only played the third quarter and it just wasn't much time. Rushing, David Montgomery was the leading rusher. Let's look at who had the highest average. Jaleel at 14.2. Tyler Beatty only 4.6. Javante only carried one time. Colavant 1.2 a carry with the same offensive line that Jaleel and 
Tyler Beatty had. So really poor performance from him. Receiving, let's look at the Broncos. Jamie Crothers ended up leading, tied with a couple others in receptions with four for 72 yards. So not a bad day. Harrison Bryant was great. Britton Venable, I thought was awesome. A great speed threat. Tyrell Simmons was fine. He just seems to drop the contested ones. Chester Truman was disgusting. Rashad Winters was fine when he played. Colavant was fine in the receiving game. Marvin Mims had a good day, even though he only had two catches. The Panthers finished as the one seed last season. Actually ridiculous that they ended up being so good. It's insane. Hopefully Cole Avant can show me a little bit more this week. If not, he's like virtually guaranteed to be cut. I only brought him in to be sort of like a power back replacement for Javante Williams if he were to ever be injured, but I just don't know if he's good enough for that. We might have to sign like a veteran to take that role. Andy Dalton looking to steal that QB1 spot from Gardner Minshew. He's gonna have to play really, really well in these next couple games to earn that on the first play will go Colavant runs into the back of Blaine Wynn the center goes nowhere first and 10 empty set for Mr. Andy Dalton and we might look downfield for Chester Truman there's a flag down and it's dropped by Truman but I think this might be DPI oh it's roughing the passer I actually felt like that was a good throw from Dalton but a drop from Truman which is a little concerning he doesn't have the best hands it's really just his speed that makes him an elite level player. And speaking of that speed, there it is down the field, down to the two. There goes Chester Truman. Andy Dalton hits him with a dot and he's got the speed to make whatever he needs to happen. He was absolutely the steal of the draft. Like, I mean, just stupid that we could get him as late as we did. Throw for Rashad Winters. He's in the end zone. Our first pick in the draft. Rashad Winters making an impact here. He's in the end zone and it's a touchdown very quickly for the Broncos. I swear the only thing this offense is missing is that QB1. I'm really excited about Tyreek Stevenson. I think he is going to be an excellent addition to this team. On third and five, can Deontay Burnett get in the backfield? He can indeed. Who is that getting scorched by Jonathan Mingo? That was Riley Moss. Got burned by Jonathan Mingo. And I said it, man, he's not good in man coverage. And look at, I mean, Mingo is just gone. That is crazy from Riley Moss. Not very great help over the top from the safeties, but I mean, it was cover too, so it's kind of in the middle of the field. We've got, you know, some quality receivers on the field right now. That's Josh Reynolds on the reception. You know, it's honestly a little upsetting that he's not going to see the field a bunch this season. Do we run it here with Avant on third and one from the 50? Give the young fella a chance. This is a good run for him. Okay, there we go, Cole. Get a decent carry. On fourth and two, we're going for it. Can Andy bail us out? Just hit... Wow! Was that four or five inaccurate throws in a row or something? From Andy Dalton, that one not even under pressure at all. It was just an it was just an easy, easy check down to Rashad Winters, get the first down, move on. Missed it completely. Uh that interception pretty much cements that Dalton will not be the starting quarterback for this season. It will definitely be Gardner Minshew or possibly even Walt Morse. But unlikely to be Walt Morse. Very likely to be Gardner Minshew. Should we let Walt Morse run with the starters for the second quarter? I think maybe we do. I think maybe we give Walt Morse a little bit of a chance. All right, Walt. I'm letting you play with the starters. Of course, Jerry Judy isn't here, who would be the primary target. But that's okay. It is what it is. Um, man, the coverage down the field was excellent. I mean, I think maybe Chester was on the right. Whoever was on the far right had a little bit of a step. First and 10, it looks like they're sending a blitz, which makes me want to send Winters on a streak. Get it to him. No, he drops it after the contact. That was the correct play and a good throw from Morse. Can Mr. Morse make something happen? Looking for Truman. Makes the grab and has the first down. Chester Truman will run into the overthrows. Morse was looking pretty good, and he's had a couple inaccurate throws deeper down the field on this drive. We'll go to Rashad Winters missed from Morse. The, I mean, these are just wide open targets that he's whiffing on. Well, there's a chance here that 
Marvin Mims is open. No, I don't think so. Chester Truman, however, is wide open. Missed by Walt Morris. Three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back whiffs from undrafted free agent Walt Morris. It's third and three. Chester Truman obviously super involved, which is not shocking. I'm looking for him a lot of the time because he's just so fast and Morse missed him. He's so open and with that speed, like he can just break away. Incomplete fourth and three. Morse has been very bad today, which is unfortunate because he's definitely had the receivers down the field. Throw a lob for Chester Truman. He makes the grab off of the Jeremy Chin tip. Chester Truman, ever the opportunist. First and goal from the five for the Broncos. As we're going to look to throw. And just, I don't know, lob it to Chester Truman. <laughs> it's intercepted in the back of the end zone. Yeah, I mean, that was stupid. Don't get me wrong. The camera was a little funky there. Did you guys see that? I don't know. I saw Cole Avant wide open on the left side. But by the time I saw him, I was already rolling to the right. And I was like, just heave it for your guy. And gets picked but it's whatever like i said none of this matters so we're just seeing who's got what and clearly walt not great on the run and you know what maybe just maybe if we get another chance offensively i'm gonna let joe shields give it a try all right joe shields will take the field for the final possession of the half we don't anticipate much better from shields compared to morse but who knows maybe just maybe as Shields first throws, a throw to Rashad Winters, which sees him to the 39. I just want to throw a deep ball to Truman with Shields. Because Shields has 96 throw power. Oh my god, I think he hit it. Oh my god, he hit it. Dude, this is what's exciting about having a quarterback with a cannon mixed with Chester Truman. It was perfect accuracy from Joe Shields. 96 throw power. There's not a lot of guys in the NFL with a better arm than him. With a stronger arm than him. Hits Chester Truman who just outruns everyone 99 speed. And it's a touchdown right before the half. Well, Joe Shields had that absolute bomb to Chester Truman to end the first half, of course. And he is going to play a good chunk of the second half now as this is Cole Avant. Oh, if he breaks that one tackle, man, he gets so far and he knows it. Oh, yeah, no worries. Brian Burns is just still in the game playing against my third string tackle. This is why I hate preseason. It's so stupid. Like, they just have, like, all of their starters still in. That's Von Bell. That's their 86 overall safety. These are all like undrafted free agents that I'm playing right now. Like JJ Russell actually was a guy that we traded for who's just absolutely terrible. But you know, maybe he makes an impact. And on this play, JT Floyd makes another impact, gets a sack. See, this is what I mean, bro. It's like a 60 overall, maybe worse, but he's playing really well. And that's cool to me. Yeah, it's against second stringers, but like, He's showing up. He's trying to earn that roster spot. It's about the storylines. Well, like, you know, sometimes... And this can't happen in Madden necessarily to the level that it's happened in real life. But the Rams drafted Pukunakua, and nobody knew who he was. And through four games, he's broken, like, every rookie receiving record other than touchdowns. You know what I mean? And it's just, like, that... The story of that is so cool. And I wish you could get more stuff like that in Madden. And I'm almost, like, trying to create those types of stories by playing all the shitters and seeing if anyone winds up being kind of good. Oh, my God. Wait, we had triangles so open. Crothers makes the catch anyway. At the 49, Jamie Crothers, he was like one of our final picks. Actually, I think he was an undrafted free agent. Is not getting the carry. Uwazarike's in the backfield. Who is in coverage? 52, that's Jake Edwards. I think that's who was in coverage. That sucks. I like Jake Edwards a lot, but he just got cooked. Third and seven from the 25. Matt Corral throwing for Chuba Hubbard, who absolutely torched J.J. Russell. I feel like that seals it for me. J.J. Russell's not making the team. There's also tight end Rashad Winters, who has hidden development and looks to be like an elite level tight end talent. Um, Jerry Judy now has superstar X Factor. I want to see what he can do, and that's a pick for Fayon Hicks. Good stuff, Fayon. You got scorched last drive, but you get a pick this time. Looking for Crothers. Oh, that's Tyrell Simmons. What a catch. Good play, uh, which I find a little more realistic. It makes me... 
use plays deeper in the playbook. Can Walt Morse make this throw to Britton Venable? He can touch down the Broncos. I don't think Joe Shields makes that throw because it's it's a middle distance throw and Joe Shields has like a 60 something overall medium accuracy. I, I don't know. I like them both for different reasons. I'll tell you right now, I'm leaning to Colovant not making the team, which I think is pretty valid. Try to run for Ben Whitmore. I feel like his route was bad. I don't I don't know that that's necessarily Walt Morse's fault. Like the cut on his route was so slow. I tried to throw with anticipation because I'm like, he's going to cut on his route and he's going to cut like pretty hard left. Look at like, it was such a soft, like didn't plant at all and just like sort of curled to the left. It was a pretty bad underthrow actually by Morse. Like it was behind him. Gardner Minshew has not played at all today. We're bringing him in and he's going to win us this game because it's Gardner freaking Minshew. Let's go Gardner. First time in the game all day. Tyler Beatty's in the game. I love Tyler Beatty. It's my dad. Looking downfield for Tyrell Simmons who makes the grab over the defender. What a snag. First and 10 throwing for Tyrell Simmons again. Can he punch it in? Run over a man. Not quite down at the two. Let's go high throw. Jamie, how is that not PI? Somebody explain to me. I'm looking for Britton Venable here, to be honest. Across the middle, hopefully. Britton Venable makes the grab. Okay, I thought that wasn't in the end zone for a second. Britton Venable looks pretty good, actually. He's been good. And that is the game we lose in a heartbreaker to the, the Panthers. Veteran receiver wants to mentor Josh Reynolds. I've been impressed with Marvin Mims. Dude has all the tools he needs to be a top receiver one day, and I think I might be able to help. Drew Sanders had a strong camp and has continued to build on that this preseason. Where has he improved the most? Football IQ. We literally have to pry him out of the film room if he's not on the field i guarantee he's watching film and every day he's getting smarter and smarter i love drew sanders he's very good lolb drew sanders has received plus five play recognition is that permanent upgrade players who's available to upgrade baron browning who has superstar x factor he's my he's my goat what does he need he needs better block shedding he's got the power moves he just needs to be able to block shed a little better which means going into run stopper and he gets plus two block shedding plus two tackle whole backup defense is starting against the cowboys starting offense they have like the best or like the most overpowered playbook in Madden. So they're, I mean, they're going to burn the hell out of us. I can just, I can taste it. Daxon 88 overall. That is, God, Madden loves him so much. Tim Ragland is lined up against CD Lamb. Awesome. So glad that that setting exists. Pick it off, Peter Palmer. Run it out. Juke this guy. Nope. I should have taken a knee. I wanted to see if he could get a pick six. Peter Palmer has two interceptions in the preseason but otherwise has played like dookie butt fart that was also excellent coverage i do want to point that out all right walt morse show me what you've got buddy actually i was gonna run with Beatty, but this place sucks oh now all of these plays suck fantastic um from the 13 we're looking to throw go all right walt morse is getting cut <laughs> We got to do a bunch of quick passes now, I'm remembering, because it's Micah Parsons. So he's just going to absolutely burn whoever we've got over there. This is a catch for Josh Reynolds in a lot of running room. A huge gain for him. Up to the 39 goes Josh Reynolds. First and 10 from the 39. I'm going to go across the field for Mims, who makes the grab. And Quinn Miners, our starting right guard, is injured. First and 10 from the 46. I might be looking to Mims again. Uh, oh, wait. They had they were in cover three. <gasps> Marvin Mims made that grab. Oh, my God, Marvin Mims. You're so good. Holy cow. First and 20 after the holding call from the 30. I wanted to look for Chester Truman uh, and Walt fumbles. Oh, who is that? The effort from Ben Powers. But he doesn't get it. I thought he got it. I got pranked. Oh, Walt. You're not doing yourself any favors buddy ford is one-on-one -on -one in coverage with ferguson how does he not break that up and deontay burnett is injured oh my god going for reynolds but it's inaccurate down the field oh my god and reynolds had to play some defense goes incomplete fourth and seven who's the poor sap in coverage it's riley moss in coverage on cd lamb how's it gonna go very poorly <laughs> 
Did you expect anything else? Dak still in the zone. Looking to throw. Why is nobody in coverage on Michael Gallup? Touchdown, Cowboys. I think that for some reason, two of my corners were double teaming CD Lamb. I, I do not know why. It's Peter Palmer who is lined up on Gallup, but then immediately runs to CD Lamb. So for some reason, Peter Palmer thought we were double teaming CD Lamb and just leaving Michael Gallup to run out on his own. All right, Britton Venable. I'm letting you be the return guy. Oh, oh, oh there's room. Juke that guy. Oh, Britton Venable. Big return. Uh, dude, I don't know. Like, when you have that level of speed, I think you just have to be on the team. First and 10 from the 47. What can you do? You can try to throw downfield for Chester Truman, who makes the grab. And is up to the 19 already. He's 6 for 8, so he's been pretty accurate so far. But that one inaccuracy led to a pick, which we obviously don't need. 30 seconds left in the first. I'm probably going to bring in Joe Shields for the second quarter. I might let Morse finish this drive no matter what, though. I'm going for Winters towards the end zone. There's a flag down. Maybe we go this play and I just immediately throw for Truman. Or potentially for Mims. I think Mims. Yeah, Mims, touchdown, Broncos. Walt Morse gets a touchdown on what may be his last throw of the preseason. Joe Shields is checked in. If he plays better than Walt Morse, or at least similar to Walt Morse today, he will earn the third QB spot for the regular season, and that is a completion to Chester Truman. So like on this play, Tyler Beatty is just open. Oh, that's a touchdown if he doesn't miss the throw. But this is the issue with Joe Shields. He's inaccurate in the intermediate passing area, and it just makes it really, really difficult to try to get anybody the ball. This is an excellent throw to Chester Truman dropped. Did I say it was an excellent throw by Chester Truman or to Chester Truman? Because only one of those is true. Throwing a deep shot for Truman. It's inaccurate from Shields again. I don't know, man. Like, he's making me want to keep Morse because Morse is at least accurate sometimes. All right, let me stop, like, trying to force things with Joe Shields and just kind of play how I feel like I would play normally. As well, dump this off to Beatty in that case. Just absolutely destroys a man's ankles. Gets a first down. Because I, I think I'm trying to force things... <clears throat> excuse me. I think I'm trying to force things downfield with shields. And uh, it obviously wasn't working on the last drive. So this one's complete to Josh Reynolds in the short field. First and 10 from the 22 for the Cowboys first stringers. Who I just remembered are still in the game. Through the third quarter. Riley Moss should have just had a pick six. Oh, how do you drop that, Riley? First and 10 from the 45 for the Cowboys. Tony Pollard's still not in the game. And, oh my God, Michael Gallup just made J.L. Skinner look like an idiot. And that's a touchdown for the Cowboys. I always just want to send Chester Truman deep. He's just got that elite speed, man. Overthrown, and Chester Truman was so open. Joe, please... All right, surely this time we get Chester Truman deep down the field. It's my one and only goal. Chester Truman overthrown and picked by Trayvon Diggs. All right, Joe Shields, you've been absolutely awful in today's game, and now you're you're making me want to reevaluate every throw that isn't like inside of ten yards is inaccurate, buddy. Like, so it's Walt Morse for the third quarter, and then we'll do Joe Shields again for the fourth. At this point, I have no clue who I want to keep between the two. Third and three. Morse looks to throw. Finds Crothers. Oh, my God. What a throw and catch. And uh, if we can't convert here, I will we'll probably just sim the rest. Britain Venable. He just made the team. He just made the team. Uh, I mean, he just made the team. Look at the far left of my offensive line. That's number 43, right? And you're like, who, who is number 43? That's my starting middle linebacker, Devin Bush, on the field, playing tight end. I got to get him a completion. I just have to. <laughs> yes, sir. Middle linebacker, Devin Bush, in at tight end, makes the catch and gets a touchdown from Joe Shields. Well, we lose in, in a big way. 
42 to 21. But on the bright side, Devin Bush got a touchdown. So we went 0 and 3 in the preseason. I forgot to look at the stats. Whoops. We can look at the stats in a minute, though. Let me go ahead and view that box score. We do have one injury. Britton Venable broke his collarbone in the sim and is going to miss seven weeks. The passing stats. Him and Shields had very similar attempts. Morse had way more yards. Three more completions on less attempts. Was sacked four times, though. One touchdown, two picks. One of those picks was, like, literally entirely my fault. I don't remember which one. The Joe Shields one was probably also my fault. Yeah, I think it's Walt Morse's job receiving Britain Venable 7 for 77 but then he broke his freaking collarbone Rashad Winters 5 for 57 Mims 4 for 52 Truman 2 for 51 Reynolds 2 for 41 Crothers 2 for 33 go ahead and advance the week to the week four of the preseason which is just a bye week but I think we have to make all of our cuts yeah and we have to cut 18 players who does it want us to cut it wants us to cut Walt Morse and Jeremy McAllister and JT Floyd and Ben Whitmore I'm more than happy to cut Ben Whitmore Cole Levant can go Go to the practice squad peter palmer can go to the practice squad so we are going to roll with three qbs this year joe shields is getting practice squatted walt morris is staying with the team Britton venable was going to be my wide receiver five because he played really really well he just broke his collarbone in the final preseason game so we are without him for the next seven weeks which is why he's on ir crothers is not going to make the team he is getting put on the practice squad i think he has potential so that means that tyrell simmons who i think otherwise would have been on the practice squad is going to be wide receiver five while venable is injured and on injured reserve when venable comes back Tyrell will probably be moved to the practice squad, but we shall see. Jake Edwards played well enough, I think, to remain on the team. JT Floyd gets practice squatted, I think. Can Fayon Hicks be practice squatted? He can, even though he's 25. It's so pointless, but let's practice squad Fayon Hicks. Let's practice squad Derek Covington. And that leaves us with five corners, which I think is fine. Riley Moss is CB4. Kelvin Joseph, CB5. So now we need to go to the depth chart, and we need to reorder it, and we need to make our official depth chart. So, starting QB... Gardner Minshew for this season, which sucks. Andy Dalton, QB2, Walt Morris will never see the field, but he's QB3. Um, Javante Williams, Tyler Beatty, and Jaleel are the halfback. Michael Burton is the fullback. Wide receiver one, Jerry Judy. And then it'll be Marvin Mims, and it'll be Chester Truman over Josh Reynolds. And then it'll be Tyrell Simmons who will only see the field if there are injuries, really. Rashad Winters is going to start over Greg Dulcich. Harrison Bryant is the tight end three. Cameron Fleming and Jackson Carmen are the left tackles. Ben Powers and Demario Belser are the left guards. Blaine Wynn, Alex Forsyth are the centers. Right guard is Quinn Miners with Pat Foote. Right tackle is Mike McGlinchey with Robbie Cameron. Starting left end is Baron Browning with superstar development. Superstar X-Factor, Matt Henningsen backing him up, which actually I don't want that. I want, where's Earl Wright? I want Earl Wright to be the backup to Baron Browning. Right end is Nick Benito at the moment. Um, Zach Allen is the D tackle. Ioma Uwazarike is the second string D tackle. Jermaine Stewart will be the third. Outside linebacker, left outside linebacker specifically is Drew Sanders, backed up by Jake Edwards. Middle linebacker is Devin Bush, backed up by Chad Muma and Tim Ragland. Right outside linebacker is... The thing about right outside linebacker is that this is going to be a pass coverage person, whoever's playing here. And Avery Baptiste is just way better in coverage. Corner is Pat Sertan, of course, Tyreek Stevenson, Damari Mathis, Riley Moss, and Kelvin Joseph. Free safety is Cameron Bynum, backed up by Dallaire and Turner Yell. Strong safety is Caden Stearns, JL Skinner, and Israel Mukwamu. The kicker is Tanner Brown, and the punter is Riley Dixon. The kick returner, I don't think I want to be Chester Truman because I don't want to risk injury there, so I will let it be Tyrell Simmons, even though he's slow. Slot receiver Marvin Mims. No, that's going to be Chester Truman in the slot with Mims behind him. Rush left end is Baron Browning. Rush right end is listed as Drew Sanders currently. That is not correct. This should either be Jonathan Cooper or Nick Benito. Yeah, if we want a better pass rusher, it should be Jonathan Cooper. Rush D tackle, Zach Allen and Uwazarike. And then Jermaine Stewart should be backing them up, not Matt Henningsen. Sub linebacker is Devin Bush and it will be Drew Sanders, not Chad Muma. Slot corner is Damari Mathis, which is fine. And then this is the practice squad. Joe Shields, 
Colavant, Jamie Crothers, Jason Fusco, Deontay Burnett, JT Floyd, JJ Russell, Terrence Hales, Derek Covington, who may get stolen, Fayon Hicks, who also may get stolen, Peter Palmer, and Isaiah Ford. And that is the starting lineup. So let's go ahead and advance to week number one of the regular season. We've made it, boys. We've made it to the regular season. Oh boy. A lot to go over in the next episode. Anyways, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode where we'll start the regular season against the Dolphins.